Hello, how's it going? Welcome back. In this video, we're going to discuss arithmetic operators in the Java language. We have addition and we have subtraction. We have multiplication. We have division. Is that how you write it? Second language. <laughs> and the modulus of LUS. All right. Modulus is the same as the rem remainder operator. Let's take some examples here to just understand how, say, for instance, addition works. So addition. Um, let's say we have int first number. That's wrong. We need to capitalize the n. And let's say the first number is 10. And the second number is 12. And then you define int sum equals first number plus second number. Oops. And then you print out sum. That's going to print out 22. All's good. Let's say then I want to define a float. And that float is called float number. Define it to be 1.1. Now you see um, the, the thing is complaining because this is double. You need to give it an F after to let the compiler know that, hey, I know that if you see a floating point by default, you are going to assume that it's a double. And then you're trying to you know, shove that into a float and it's not going to work. So I'm, I'm, I'm either going to have to change this to double or I'm going I'm to keep it float because there's just no need to take up more memory with the, with the double data type. And I'm just going to say, look, this, this is a float. It's not a double. So um, treat it as a float. And so the error goes away because you have an expression here that evaluates to float that gets stored in a float memory location. Now, what would happen if this expression here, we have an expression, first number plus second number. That's an expression that evaluates into what is first number, integer. What is second number, integer. So the summation of an integer and an integer evaluate into an integer. So what would happen if we are to add, throw in a float to the mix? It's going to complain. Why? Because now it is saying, hey, uh, this, was, this is integer, and this is integer, so those two are integer. But now you're bringing in a float with a floating point. So I can't keep this expression whatever this expression evaluates to as an integer, it has to be changed into a float. Even if the float was just one, like it doesn't matter if, if it had or it didn't have. The fact is you are using a memory location that is different to integer. Now, an integer, okay, so an integer, can be stored in float, but a float cannot be stored in integer. Now look here, it's saying um, local variable float number is redundant. Um, well, the error is gone now. So it's just saying that it's, it's a reassignment. But you see, see what I'm doing here? This is an integer evaluating um, expression that you can just store it in a float. That's no problem. But you can't do the other way around, store a float into an integer, uh, which is here. So you either change this to a float, and then the error goes away, or you cast this one to integer. Now, casting is just basically, in the case of a floating number, it just gets rid of the floating point. Let's say that we want to keep it float and we change the, um, the data type of sum to be float. And then we print 
we're going to get 23.1. If we keep it integer and we cast it, like we said earlier, we're going to get 23. OK, so just just so you know that if you bring in different data types, let's say I'm going to bring in, I'm going to change this back into floats. I'm going to bring in another, um, I'm going to call it double number. I'm going to give it a value of 2.1. Notice it's not complaining because this is double by default. I don't need to put a D at the end. I mean, you could, but you don't have to because it's treated as double. And then you're trying to add the double number in here and it's going to start complaining again. Hey, you're providing a double uh, evaluating uh, the expression that is going to evaluate in, uh, to a, into a double. And you're trying to store that into a float. I don't know if you remember the whole um, Java primitive data types. So if you have a double, that's a 64 sized memory location. And you're trying to shove that down into a float, which is a 32-bit memory location. That's not going to work. It's going to complain. You can either say, hey, um, well, cast this into a float. And then, you know, what, what's going to happen here is this is going to be converted from a 64 bits into a 64-bit memory location into a 32-bit memory location prior to performing the addition. So that would be the first thing that's going to happen. Once that happens, then we have a integer, integer float float that are going to be stored in a float. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So let's look at the casting issue that we seen earlier. So I'm going to I'm going to comment out those we don't need them for now and I'm just going to keep the double number for now. So this double number that we have here, if you take it and print it, you're going to get 2.1111111. All right. What happens if you go Float, float number, and then you take that double number and you cast it. Now it's going to complain, obviously, because you're trying to put a 64-bit, uh, just to refresh your memory, 64-bit sized uh, value into a 32-bit sized value. It's not going to work. So you're going to have to do some sort of conversion. The conversion we're going to do here is casting to float. And then if you S out the float number. All right, so the conversion took down the number from two point. We got here 14 digits and we got here seven digits. So it took it down from 14 to seven digits. And that kind of makes sense, you know. I'm not, actually, I'm not actually very educated on how these conversions work. Um, you can look it up if you're interested. But the fact that you have a 32-bit um, uh, memory size going from 64 actually makes sense that you see half the number of the digits after the floating point. All right. Now, I, I actually can't answer the question that you might have, why the two? I may need to research that. So uh, it, it, it's re irrelevant for now. Now, the next thing I want to do is to cast the double number into an integer number. So you can't do that, obviously, unless you cast it into an integer. Oh, we didn't print it. And once you print that, you get two. 
So that's how casting works in terms of numbers. I hope that makes sense. And so what, what we saw earlier here was that we had um, if oh yeah, we've we have to reintroduce those numbers. So we have an integer, an integer. So those two will evaluate to an integer. And then we see a floating point number. So this expression is going to evaluate to a floating point expression. All right, so it's saying here you provided a float and you're trying to store it in an int. Okay, and then you throw in a double in the mix. So everything has to scale um, up to the biggest value that you're providing, which is E double, 64. So we finished addition, so we can get rid of it. Now let's talk about subtraction. It's the same thing, pretty much. Um, we could... Uh, we could define an int sum equals second number minus first number. I meant to say first number. S out sum. And you can run the thing. You get two. It's 12 minus 10. Now, the same stuff we talked about before, there's no need to repeat. If you're trying, if you try and to mix floating point and integer, so this expression is going to be treated as a float, as you can see here, and that means that you need to cast. Now, we did casting before um, on, on the number itself. You can cast the entire expression if you use these parentheses. So it's really up to you. So what what that means is this is going to evaluate the float and then the entire float which would be second number 12 minus float number one it's going to evaluate to 11 which float 11 and then that is going to um, be casted into integer and then it's going to be stored into an integer now I wasn't meaning to use parentheses. Uh, I was meaning to use float here and then see the result. And it, you see the number that's being printed, even though there is no floating point here, you see a floating point here. And that's just Java telling you, hey, this is a floating point number. So that's for subtraction, multiplication. Multiplication is the same as well. You could just use the asterisk sign. And if you put an integer here, it's not going to work. So the same stuff. Multiply 12 by one float becomes 12 of a floating point nature. Now, when it comes to division, division is a special case when it comes to integers. So I have this example here, which we are dividing the second number, which is 12, by the first number, which is 10. So if you divide 12 by 10, you get 1.2. However, this expression is evaluating to integer. So it's even though you'd expect the, the result to be a floating point number, because it's 1.2, it's two integers and it's evaluating to an integer and it has no problem storing it in an integer. So if you run this, knowing that integers can't store floating point numbers, instead of getting 1.2, you get one. Let's change that to float. Well, it's 1.0, meaning that right here, the expression evaluated to integer. So the expression already didn't have a floating point. So even if you try to store it in a floating point memory location, it's not going to be 1.2. So you're going to have to do something here like add, sorry, add a casting to one of those numbers so that the Java language would bother computing the, um, the fraction part of the number. But if the, la if the Java language is presented with two integers, then it's going to 
and not bother about the um, what comes after the floating point number, uh, the floating point. So if you mix like we seen earlier, then you're going to get a problem because now Java is going to, you know, you're providing a float like just we did earlier. We casted the integer, which was the first number, into a float. So whenever there is a float somewhere in the division, it doesn't matter if the float is here or here. I mean, let's actually try it. Um, so if you put first number here, so we did cast this to float and we saw that 1.2 was returned. If you cast this to float, and then you hit run, you also get 1.2. Obviously, if both of them are, I hope I don't make a mistake now. <laughs> if both of them are float, you're going to get also 1.2. So you get the point. However, if, if, um, if you tried to store the floating point number into an integer, it's going to complain. So here's the takeaway. The takeaway is if you have two integers, in a division, the result is going to be an integer. If you have at least one floating point, the result is going to be floating point. And that goes also for double. So that's the special case for integers when it comes to division. Now the modulus operation, if you run this, you get one. The modulus or the remainder operation, if, if you replace this, with the remainder operator, and you run this, you get two. Now, what does that mean? It means that after, how do I explain modulus? It means that after getting, it, it, hmm, there's an equation that I might be able to use. So the integer division value, right? multiplied by the number divided by number divided by um, and this whole thing the number being divided excuse my second language here minus the integer so let's try that so how how do you get the modulus value that we got here too can create this expression here int modulus value equals uh, we're going to get a second number we're going to go second number minus the integer division value so uh, second number divided by first number now remember this expression is going to be one. is going to is, is going to be integer. It's not going to have the floating point. Uh, and then you multiply that. You multiply that by the number being divided by. And then you print this value, and you get two. So if we if we made this, I don't know. 26 and we kept this 10 we're gonna get six here which is the same if we because 26 would have two tens in it so if you multiply 10 by 2 you get 20 and then you take 26 minus 20 which is six uh, i hope this was clear if it wasn't feel free to research the modulus or the remainder operator on your own and uh yeah that's it for this video i hope <clears throat> i hope this was helpful if you have any questions leave comments and i will see you in the next one bye bye